exciting program called Two Steps a Month to Emergency and Disaster Preparedness. And what's so great about this program and that it's meant to be done in community. Now, many of us, if asked, are we prepared for a, a personal emergency or a larger scale disaster? Chances are we're gonna say, maybe a little bit or not at all. And so what's really great about this program is that it's meant to be done in community, however you define that, whether it's your block or whether it's um, a book group or a religious organization you belong to or your school. You know, when we do in community, I mean, there's a lot of great benefits. One, you have the support of others and, you know, whether you share resources or hold each other accountable. And, you know, when after several months when, when you finish this program, you know that the people you care about also are a little bit more prepared for a possible disaster or emergency. So each month what we do is we have two steps. And um, the first month is around emergency contacts and an evacuation plan. And so we have a sheet that you can download off of our website, which is two steps a month .com. You can also get it at the richmondrivets.org site. And you first write down your emergency contacts. I recommend that you download it and type onto it so that you can share it with everybody in your household. I don't know about you, but I do not remember most people's phone numbers anymore because it's all programmed into my phone. So having a hard copy should my phone run out of batteries and I can't recharge stuff because electrical stuff is down, awesome to have it written down. Now, one of the things that can happen in a large scale um, disaster is that if everybody is trying to call locally, the phone lines can get jammed up. So some things to think about is that sometimes a text message can go through when a phone message can't. But also really important to do is to have an out of area contact. So what that person is, is someone who's not going to be impacted by the disaster. So for example, me, I might have my parents who live in um, Maryland serve as my, our contact person so that you know, they can help coordinate and connect all the points about, you know, is everybody okay and where are we and all that stuff and how do we kind of reunite. So awesome to get this done because I'm sure you feel like me that after just like the initial shock of a disaster, the next thing we all want to know is like, are the people that we love, are they okay? And how do we get back in touch with them? So having this emergency contact piece is really, really helpful. Now we also have on here medical alerts. And this is specifically like, do you have allergies to any food or antibiotics? Should you have to be treated um, with any uh, medications like that or, you know, uh, food, especially for young kids who may not know all these things about themselves. And then also medical conditions. So if someone was a first responder and came across someone, it might be helpful to know if they're diabetic or not. Now, the other piece is around the second step is your family evacuation and reunion plan. So. Once again, this could be for just an emergency such as a fire, so it's something more local to you and your family, which is like, okay, who's responsible for getting the children or the pets or checking on uh, someone who's got special needs or an elderly person and where are you gonna meet? You know, so we're meeting in the front or we're meeting in the back, like how, how are we gonna navigate that? However, it's also important to kind of think of possible scenarios. So like looking around for utility poles or things that might be a hazard if it's a larger scale disaster, especially something like where I live, earthquakes. Um, and then, you know, what is the plan of action should, you know, we not be at home, you know, or not in the, in the, in the neighborhood. So like in the Bay Area, you know, what happens when someone's stuck across a bridge, you know, and the kids are at school on the other side of a bridge, like what, what is your plan of action? How are you gonna kind of navigate that? How are you gonna reconnect with them? So thinking about some of the possible scenarios, kind of having some general guidelines about what you're gonna do is a really, really great thing to think about ahead of time. So um, an, another little piece about this is a 10 minute evacuation plan. So if you had to kind of grab stuff and go, you know, one of the things that we're gonna talk about later is a, a go bag, which is something that has your basic kind of needs for three days. So like food, some clothing, um, you know, water. So, you know, you would have that in your 10 minute evacuation plan, but also what are some other things that you might wanna grab? So a couple months ago, we had a gas leak in the area and we had a 10 minute evacuation. I got an alert on my phone saying, you know, evacuate. <laughs> 
And so having a list of what are the things that I find most valuable that if I weren't able to come back to my house, I would want to take. And that's really personal to you. And so thinking about ahead of time, whether it's something of sentimental value, or something, whether it's something of monetary value, whether it's records that are really important to you, um, you know, like insurance and stuff like that. So just having pre-thought that out and having a hard copy, really, really awesome. So besides this sheet, what we have each month is we have these kind of do now steps. So one of the things that I'm gonna ask you to do now is get shoes and a flashlight and put them under your bed. You know, or if you don't have a bed that's got a space underneath, maybe in a bag right next to your bed. Because in earthquake country, if there's an earthquake in the middle of the night, one of the main injuries is people getting out and stepping on broken glass. But if you've got shoes that you can step on, that you can walk, that are sturdy, you've got a flashlight, you know, because the power is most likely going to be out, um, that really prevents you from being someone who's able to help to being someone who's going to need help because you've got no cut feet. So everybody in your household should have shoes and a flashlight and preferably some leather gloves should there be broken glass and all under your bed or right near it in a little bag or something. And then we also have a tip of the month each month. And so the tip for month one is always keep your gas tank at least half full. So the kind of new motto is half is the new empty. So you start seeing that gauge kind of going down and you're like, whoa, whoa, <laughs> time to refill it. And so the reason why we have that as the tip and that we want it to be a, like a lifelong habit is that like an earthquake country, you know, if there's an earthquake, chances are the power is not going to work. And, it, and even if it did, it's going to be unsafe to necessarily kind of pump gas. It could be a hazard. So, um, however, maybe you live in hurricane country and if people are trying to evacuate, there's going to be a rush on gas and you may not be able to get enough gas to kind of get you to a safe haven. So half is a new empty, <laughs> get that into, tell your friends, get it into your like lifelong habit skill toolbox. And, um, once again, this is really meant to be done in community. Um, I'm a middle school teacher. Hi, kids. And um, so we do this at our school. Like, why teach kids about severe weather in geological events such as earthquakes and not really give them the tools in which to be prepared and respond? So um, talk with your, you know, your neighbors. Talk with your friends. You know, if you know people that are teachers, you know, let's do this in community. And uh, we can be, be more prepared. And together... We can do it. Two Steps a Month is a project of the Richmond Rivets, a transition town initiative located in Richmond, California, dedicated to helping our community live more locally and resiliently. We also sponsor a seed lending library located in the Richmond Public Library, where community members can come and borrow seeds for free. We provide free education on seed saving so that they can return some of next generation seeds for other people to borrow. This is going to create locally adapted varieties and a community of abundance and sharing. Don't worry if you don't live in Richmond, California. You can go to our Create a Seed Library page and create your own library in your own community. Join the movement. Mm -hmm.